wildlife education specialist and our first Fridays are our wildlife Fridays. And we are on a very special field trip today at the San Diego River. And we are gonna be talking all about World Migratory Bird Day. Now, this is a really special day, my friends, and the actual day is tomorrow, Saturday the 8th. And it's a day that's been dedicated to fostering a greater understanding and appreciation and protection for the grand phenomenon of what bird migration is. Now, it's a global campaign and it is dedicated to raising awareness of migratory birds and the need to have international cooperation and to conserve them. So what is migration really? It's just a pattern of behavior in which animals travel from one habitat to another in search of food, better conditions, or a mate possibly, and where they can have their babies. There are two main important factors that make migration different from any type of any other animal movement. And it's really that it happens seasonally and migration is a return journey. So it's not just them moving from one spot to another, it's them going to another spot and then coming back. And a lot of different animals actually migrate, including species of fish, crustaceans, amphibians, reptiles, insects, and mammals. Now, San Diego, my friends, we are super special. We are on a very specific Pacific flyway. So we actually have three different flyways that come through our Pacific flyway, but there are about four different flyways in the United States, Pacific, Central, Mississippi, and Atlantic. But we as San Diegans lie on that Pacific flyway. So there are some birds that come here to breed or they will just stop off in San Diego and travel as far south as Central and South America. Now, a lot of birds need to stop and refuel at really special places, and these stopover sites are called important bird areas. In San Diego, we actually have 13 important bird areas across our county, and these areas have a lot of different conservation projects occurring, uh, by different local organizations to protect these very special areas and one is right behind us. So the San Diego River really feeds in from all the way up into Ramona and Julian down here into Ocean Beach and Mission Bay where it kind of drops off but just to name a few of the birds that migrate and come through San Diego here is a whole list from our American crows, Anna's hummingbirds, our bantail pigeons to our northern flickers, our goldfinches, our yellow rumped warblers. So this is the best time to go out and do some birding, my friends. You're gonna see a lot of different birds coming through. And then some of these guys just hang out and don't migrate because San Diego has such amazing weather. But a few of those different areas of those really important bird areas, the San Diego River, the San Diego Bay, Tijuana River Reserve, and um, the Otay Sweetwater National Wildlife Refuge. So really specific areas that we wanna make sure we are doing everything to protect, conserve, and make sure they stay clean. Some of us San Diegans might remember the river as just a place where people dump trash all the time, but thankfully we have a wonderful organization here in San Diego called the San Diego River Park Foundation, who is solely dedicated to keeping this river pristine for birds like this behind me. Now for, okay, I'm gonna try to step out and not fall away. For Migratory Bird Day, my friends, they have highlighted this very Migratory Bird Day. They kind of have, there's one organization that takes credit and kind of responsibility for educating people about this special day. And they do have a few featured species. We have the green-winged teal, which is a duck, a royal tern, turkey vulture, yellow warbler, a wood thrush, and those are just to name a few. But what we're looking at are possibly royal terns, my friends. I'm not always a great at birding, but there are like the magnificent tern, the royal tern, and they all look very similar, but they have very similar habits. So our royal terns are the ones who are flying gracefully and slowly along the coastlines, diving for fish. And then once they find that fish, they use their dagger-like beaks to go ahead and get that nice little kill for themselves. They are social birds. They don't look very social right now, my friends, but there are usually a lot more royal terns and terns in general, but we have avocets over here. We have great blue herons. We have um, 
all sorts of herons and terns around here. So the river, again, beautiful little guy right here. I should know my birds a lot better than I do right now, my friends. But these social birds, what they're gonna do is um, kind of hang out here as they're gonna mate and have babies. And kind of cool little note, the oldest royal tern ever to be known in the wild was at least 30 years old and they were found in Belize in 2013 and it was a bird that was banded in North Carolina in 1983. So my friends, migratory birds, super awesome. If you see on the screen, you'll see a turkey vulture next to a, a royal tern, next to an Anna's hummingbird. And these animals, oh, we have turkey vultures. We have all of these birds around here. But really, my friends, since we're at Project Wildlife, we are in the height of baby season and we are seeing all these animals come through to us. So really, what can we do to help? Always reducing, reusing, recycling, huge, huge things to help these animals out. Picking up trash whenever we possibly can so it's not making its way into this river that feeds directly into our ocean. We want to make sure we're helping all these animals out as much as possible. Can you see all this human development around us? Right now they are redoing one of the bridges that connects Mission Bay to, um, my gosh, over here in San Diego. That's an area that I can, Ocean Beach area as well. <laughs> so you can see how much is going around these birds every single day while they're trying to mate, while they're trying to nest and have children, while they're just trying to live their life. So making sure that we can do everything possible on our end. So what can we do to help migratory birds is making sure that we make our windows obvious. So a lot of bird strikes come to, to Project Wildlife. And so different things we can use are decals. But when you're using those decals, you don't want to have them so separated because then the birds can't see them. You want to have them pretty close together. And then also just by lower, lowering your blinds halfway breaks up that window. And so it helps these animals see because a lot of birds actually migrate at nighttime. So the next thing we can do is make sure we go lights out between dusk and dawn, trying to cover up those lights that come through our houses or that you have outside. These lights can really distract some of these birds and they can get really disoriented. So doing a whole lights out for the dusk and dawn time is really gonna help these migratory birds. Go to iNaturalist. This is something that you can do to become a citizen scientist is that when you're out and about, maybe you're walking along the river or you're out just outside your house, you can go to iNaturalist and capture plant species, animal species so that they can utilize this information to see what different types of animals and plants are around your neighborhood. And that helps them kind of collect all this information and determine places of concern where we do need to put a little more effort into helping out our local wildlife. And then always become an advocate, speaking up for our wildlife, speaking up for just all of these natural spaces that we have. Every time they go ahead and put new development in, they usually want to ask some of the residents that are around that area. And maybe we just need to do a little bit more to preserve more spaces for these animals as we continue to encroach on them. Sometimes we don't always have the best intentions and we get upset when we put our house on their home and we get mad when they come back around our home. So having a little bit more compassion for our wild neighbors and learning a thing or two on the benefits that they provide for us and really enjoying nature as much as we can. We can learn a lot from nature, my friends, and we usually do. And so it's really important that we do everything we possibly can to help out our local wild animals. If you ever go down and you're around the river or different days or you're on a hike and you come across a sick or injured wild animal, please be careful. And if you need to call our resources, you can definitely do that. And we bring that animal into Project Wildlife as soon as you can. But if you don't know if it's injured or orphaned, leave it where it's at. We want to make sure that we're not picking up healthy wild animals and bringing them into our care center. My friends, Project Wildlife is in the height of their baby season. We are averaging 100 patients a day right now. So it is incredibly important to only intervene when you have to. And then if you're able to donate and help support our plight, 
We really do all of this based on donations from the public, like members of you guys really help support us and what we do every single day to get these animals into our center, get them healthy, rehabilitated and released back out. That is our ultimate goal, my friends, but anything you can con contribute to Project Wildlife, it is going to be matched as well. So if you have a second, <laughs> I almost fell. If you have the ability to donate today, please do so. But if you can't and people come to you asking you for help with wildlife issues, send them to our website, sdhumane.org. If you go to our coexist page, you will learn a ton of information, not only about seabirds, shorebirds, all sorts of different wild animals out there, my friends. So let's do our part, help out our wildlife. They help us out. Come down to the San Diego River, pick up some trash while you're here, and let's do our part to help out these beautiful animals that call San Diego home, whether it's just for a moment in time when they're migrating through, or if this is their home spot, we can do everything we can to help out these animals right behind us as well. I hope you learned something today. I hope we don't get in trouble, but <laughs> if there are any questions for me, my friends, Migratory Bird Day tomorrow, Saturday, May 8th. It's a wonderful day to celebrate. Go out, get some binoculars, do some birding, look up the day. There's a special website dedicated to Migratory Bird Day 2021. And thank you everyone. I hope you learned something today. Get outside, it's gonna be a beautiful weekend everyone here in San Diego. Thanks guys, have a great day today.